Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to create a powerful prism portrait effect from a photo. The technique that I'll show you allows you to quickly replace your photo with others without having to redo all the effects. Open a high resolution photo of a close up of someone's face. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. We'll crop it to a specific size and resolution. Open your crop tool and crop presets. Click 16 by 9. In the width field, type in 1920px for pixels, and in the height field, type in 1080. Go to a corner, and when you see a diagonal double arrow, press and hold Alt or Option plus Shift as you drag it out until a face is cropped to a size you like. Press Enter or Return. To slide the face up or down, press the up or down arrows on your keyboard. Then click the check mark at the top. To fit your document back onto the canvas, press Ctrl or Command 0. Next, we'll cut our subject from the background. To do this, for this example, I'll use the magic wand tool. If you're using this tool as well, make sure contiguous is checked. I'll make the tolerance 10 pixels. Click the white area on the left to make a selection of it, and shift click the white area on the right to add its selection as well. Invert the selection by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift I. Press Ctrl or Command J to cut the subject out and copy it to its own layer. Click the background to make it active. We'll fill it with black, but first, if your foreground and background colors aren't black and white respectively, press D on your keyboard. Since your foreground color is black, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Make the subject active. We'll convert our subject into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively, as well as allow us to replace the photo with another without having to redo all the effects. Click the icon at the upper right corner of the Layers panel and click Convert to Smart Object. Make a copy of it by pressing Ctrl or Command J. Reduce its opacity to 50%. Make six copies of this layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J six times. Alt-click or Option-click the eyeball icon next to the top layer to hide all the other layers. Scroll to the bottom and make the black background visible. Scroll back to the top and open your rectangular marquee tool. Go to the top left corner and drag a selection approximately this wide to the bottom of your subject. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the top layer. Increase its opacity to 100% and make the layer below it visible and active. Go to the upper right corner of the last shape and drag another selection to the bottom. As before, click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask of the selection next to the active layer. Then increase its opacity to 100%. Make the layer below it visible and active. Make sure the next selection covers most of the eye. Continue these steps for each copy of your subject. Scroll to the bottom of the Layers panel and hide the black background. Scroll back to the top. We'll slide each layer to the left or right, but first, open your Move tool and make sure Auto Select is checked. As soon as we click on our subject, Auto Select automatically selects the respective layer that corresponds to where we clicked on our subject. Now, we don't have to find and activate each layer manually in order to slide it. Click on the left of your subject 
and press and hold Shift as you slide the image to the left edge. To slide the next shape, click the left of your subject to make that layer active, and again, press and hold Shift as you drag the shape approximately here. Click on the right of your subject to make that layer active, and press and hold Shift as you slide it to the right edge. Slide the rest of the shapes to these approximate positions on your document. If you need to reposition any of them, simply click on the shape, press and hold Shift, and slide it. Uncheck Auto Select. To save space in the Layers panel, we'll group all of our subject's copies into a folder. Make the top layer active, scroll to the bottom, and shift click the bottom copy of the subject. Press Ctrl or Command G. Make a copy of the folder and convert it into a smart object. Then make a copy of it. I'll name the folder Strips, but you can name it whatever you like. Name the second layer Blur and the top layer Dark. Make the black background visible. Press V to open your Move tool and press and hold Shift as you drag the layer to the left until it aligns with the area of the layer below it. It's okay to leave a little space between the two layers. To center the subject's face on our document, Shift click the blur layer to make it active as well, and press and hold Shift as you slide your image to the center. Click the dark layer to make it active, and reduce its opacity to 50%. Click the FX icon, and click Bevel Emboss. The style is Inner Bevel, and the technique is smooth. The depth is 100%, and the direction is up. The size is 68 pixels, the angle is 180 degrees, and the altitude is 5 degrees. The highlight mode is Color Dodge, and its opacity is 75%. The Shadow Mode is Color Burn, and its opacity is 30%. Make the Blur layer active, and go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Make the Radius 15 pixels. Click the FX icon and click Bevel Emboss. Keep the same settings as you had for the dark layer, except make the size 100 pixels. To save space in the Layers panel, let's collapse the effects. Make the dark layer active. Click the Adjustment Layer icon, and click Black-White. I did an in-depth tutorial on the Black-White Adjustment Layer, so if you'd like to watch it, I provided its link in my video's description below. In the Properties panel, open the Preset List, and click on each preset to see how it affects your image. For this example, I'll use the Blue Filter preset. To adjust a particular color component, select the On Image Adjustment Tool icon. The area that you click on corresponds to that specific color of your image. In this example, I'd like to brighten the irises of the eyes. So I'll click on an iris and drag the tool to the left or right, which makes that specific color darker or brighter in the image. Since the eyes are light blue, You'll notice that the cyan slider automatically slides to the right as I drag the tool to the right. Next, we'll create a dark soft vignette on both sides of our image, which helps to focus our attention to the center of the face. Make a new layer, 
and open your gradient tool. Make sure the linear gradient icon is active and open your gradient presets. Click the black to transparent box and click on the left edge of your document. Press and hold Shift as you drag the tool straight across approximately this far and release. Go to the right edge and again press and hold Shift as you drag the tool to the left approximately the same distance. Reduce its opacity to 60%. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.